if there was ever a time to defy Roe, if there was ever a time to say, you know what, we're just, we're just not going to do it anymore. We're just going to make abortion illegal in our state. You surprised? <laughs> surprised, Eddie? <laughs> if I woke up tomorrow with my head sewn to the carpet, I wouldn't be more surprised than I am right now. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Liberator Podcast. I am happy to be here for this episode. Wasn't here for the last episode, which was really, really good. It was a good one. I, it, it, I mean, I don't know if it would have been better if I was on it, but I mean, I was watching it when it happened, and I was like, man, this is, this is some fantastic material. Um, this week, uh, Sam Riley is not going to be here, so this episode is going to be re- really good. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel sitting in for Sam, and of course, James Silverman. So on to today's topic, Abby Johnson, abolitionist, <laughs> made an abolitionist video. Yeah. This is not one, uh, you know, I've been, I, I try to plan out our topics ahead of time, you know, the weeks, and this is not one of those that like I've had planned for a while. Uh, I would say. This isn't like on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> this was not something that I expected to be talking about on the Liberator podcast, um, but this is, yeah, I guess kind of cool in some ways that we'll get into yeah. that, that this yeah. is the topic for this week. We want to comment on it. Basically, yeah. to intro the thing, Abby Johnson, who has, um, as most of the people who watch the show know, has historically for the past decade been one of the primary opponents of abolitionism. Of all things, abolitionism. Yeah. Um, the way we apply our strategy uh, politically, legislatively, the way abolitionists uh, call abortion murder, treat it as murder, go to abortion mm-hmm. mills, preach the gospel, show abortion images, you name it, the things that abolitionists have done. Abby Johnson has usually been opposed to us and not just sort of like, oh, uh, implicitly, like explicitly. Yeah. yeah. Like she's explicitly said, I don't support abolition bills because if we were to pass an abolition bill, like the state might lose its funding. Like she's said things like that. We've ranted and railed every time and had to respond to her. Um, But as James said, this is not the sort of thing that I think would have ever been like on a, like we have a potential liberator podcast topics issue, uh, our uh, board and where it's like, we could talk about this, 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 this. If I put up there, like uh, we need to discuss Abby Johnson's recent sort of, um, approval or promotion of immediate abolition, <laughs> immediate abolition yeah. in defiance of the Supreme court and punishing people for getting abortions. That I, that's not something that I would have ever put on the board yeah. or thought. Yeah. So, but here we are. Yep. Here we are. <laughs> She's made a video. It yeah. is a, it's a six minute video. And so this episode, we're going to, we're going to watch Abby Johnson's video and we're going to, agree with a lot of what she says a lot of what she's saying so welcome to the twilight zone (laughs) edition of uh the liberator podcast so there's probably no better way to do this and just kind of like um you know go through it so we're gonna we're gonna play parts of it stop make comments see where this goes but uh you we're not gonna remove anything from the video and you can watch the whole video um on her youtube on her youtube channel yep so here we go Hey guys, Abby Johnson here. So I coming to you with something. Some of you are going to be like, is she crazy? But I, I don't know. I've just been thinking about something and I wanted to throw it out here because I actually want your comments. I'm just sort of interested to, to get your opinions on it and your take from the public. So (laughs) I've been thinking a lot about just sort of the the law and um, 
and Roe v. Wade. And, you know, of course we have the Dobbs case coming up uh, at the Supreme Court and, and we'll have their ruling in the spring. And that could be huge for us. You know, they could potentially, you know, overturn Roe, which would be awesome. Um, but maybe not, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it won't overturn Roe. Maybe it'll only, you know, ban abortion past 15 weeks and the majority of abortions take place in the first trimester. And so, I mean, that would only ban 10% of abortions, leaving 90% of babies, you know, still being slaughtered in our country. And so, you know, then what? That okay, that just, for, I mean, she hasn't even gotten to the part that we really want to highlight, but yeah. from the get-go, actually, you play this, it, there's like three more seconds because oh, okay. what she says. She's, she's just said, if the Supreme Court banned abortion after 15 weeks, that would really leave 90% of all the babies unprotected. Mm -hmm. And then she says, that's really not success. That's really not success. Okay. That is strangely before getting, that's like a refutation of incrementalism. Like the standard pro-life thing is if you can save some babies, that is success. And Abby Johnson has been on record, like, don't get in a tizzy if you have to, like, allow some babies to die yeah. to save other babies. That's been her historic position and the position of the pro-life movement um, that a thing is good if it saves some babies. Yeah. And that's not you just being mean. She actually said, don't get in a tizzy. That's yeah. yeah. He's yeah, quoting she, yeah. her for, for those of you who don't know that. Right. Yeah. She, it was like specifically allowing like 40,000 rape conceived children to die yeah. is not bad. Don't get in a tizzy. Yeah. So it's, it's good to hear her speak in this way to have a more appropriate definition of success when it yeah. comes to the fight against abortion. Yeah. Um, and it also, you know, it, it seems like she's been reading some of our stuff with or not necessarily free the states, but possibly free the states, possibly other abolitionist groups material, um, because you had that kind of the the changing definition of, of success. Then you have the stuff about like the Supreme Court, even though it's this you know kind of Trump created Supreme Court with a, with a six three Republican majority, they very well and if we're to learn from history, are probably not going to overturn Roe. They're probably not going yeah. to abolish abortion. That's probably not going to happen. Um, and so and, to hear, and she's willing to entertain that. Yeah. yeah. Usually pro-lifers are like, until, like, it's like maybe they secretly know it's not going to go anywhere, but until it doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to talk yeah. about how, like, we're going to repeal Roe. Yeah. Like, like to, to talk positively, like, and that the Supreme Court, the key to the whole thing could do this great thing coming up. So let's pray for that. She's more like saying, like, would it even be good if they upheld Dobbs v. Jackson? Like, would it even be good if they ruled in favor of the 15-week ban? Yeah. I mean, it's just, this is unprecedented. Um, and from here, she moves on to the greater point of, well, let's listen to her. So, um, I've been thinking about it, and, and I've been thinking about, you know, what, what do we do then? what you know what do we do now and what is the solution and i think there was you know for a while there was sort of this idea from some people and i didn't you know i wasn't sure if it was going to work you know people were talking about just defying roe they were talking about just saying you know um you know what just we just need a governor to say that we're just not going to follow Roe v. Wade. You know, it's it, it shouldn't be, it's unjust. It, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, sort of the law of the land, as they say. And so we're just going to defy it. And we just need a governor to, to step up and to say, abortion is going to be illegal in our state. And we don't care what the Supreme Court ruling says. We don't care what Roe says. It is illegal here in our state, and it's going to be punishable. And- there have been some people saying this back in the- for, for a while. Yeah. yeah, these people being yeah us us abolitionists. other abolitionists. I mean, yeah. she basically 
she basically says, okay, so free the states. Why are we called free the states? Well, we believe that the states should be free to criminalize abortion, abolish abortion within their borders as a matter of asserting state sovereignty to uphold the right to life, criminalize abortion, extend the laws of murder equally to all people, and that governors of states should be able to just do that and say, hey, Supreme Court, you're wrong. We don't have to follow unjust, wicked, unconstitutional decrees. And we've been saying that is key. That has to be done. And banging that drum now for about a decade. And Abby Johnson for that decade has basically said, you guys are stupid and wrong and you can't do that. Or maybe she just never really was listening to it or thinking about it fully. But something has happened in the past week or two or however long she's been thinking about it where out of nowhere and she make no, she's not like talking about some other group. The picture yeah. on the video is of, I don't know that particular abolitionist, but I designed it. I believe it's Josiah Thomas. That's Josiah if Thomas. I'm seeing it right. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like wearing an abolitionist t-shirt. Yeah. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I designed that t-shirt, you know I yeah. mean? It's, and so Roe is not the law of the land. It's the lie of the land. I think that's an operation save America sign. Mm. Um, but it's, she's not saying, Hey, these people that I used to argue against, she doesn't call us abolitionists, but she's clearly referring to abolitionists as, yeah. as the comments on the video. Everyone's like, oh, you mean like abolitionists have been saying? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I appreciate the fact that she doesn't sort of throw in a, this, this idea is held by these stupid, crazy, mean people or whatever. She's, mm -hmm. she's just letting the idea, um, the argument that we put forward be floated and kind of saying, I haven't really ever thought about this, but dang there's the I why am not out. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it would work i really wasn't sure if it would work but yeah. maybe yeah and like it's like a willingness to entertain the idea now in the abolitionist movement there's this um this phrase or this uh hashtag or whatever you call it called steel steel balling and the idea is that abolitionists will um, call for things, demand things, argue for certain things. And as a result, even our opponents, even people who disagree with us will be moved towards our position yeah. to some degree, even if they're not joining us. Right. Because of the power and the weightiness of the truth that we're proclaiming. The, you, you, can, yeah. you can oppose that, but we're proclaiming something. It is very true and just, and it's going to pull people towards us, even, yeah. even if they're not liking the fact they're being pulled towards us. What we're saying is yeah. true, and they're going to have to drift in our direction yeah. because of it. So historically, this notion of steel ball has been something like we're forcing on people. So the idea is that abolitionists come on the scene and call for the thing that should be called for, the abolition of abortion as murder in defiance of the Supreme Court. Um, and as a result, pro-lifers become more and more uh, uncompromising and closer to that position because they can't. So like an example would be, um, we started saying so strongly, you know, chil rape conceived children shouldn't be murdered. Um, and you know, just, we're just ranting and ranting and ranting on that. Like, you know, about children created in the image of God, like which of these babies deserves to die? You know, the, all this kind of stuff that abolitionists were doing just to militate against the rape exception and slowly, but surely we've been seeing that the rape exception is less acceptable even among pro-lifers who are not abolitionists mm -hmm. the like the rape exception isn't always being explicitly put into like even heartbeat bills and so on and so forth because yeah. we've made it a uh, a thing that you know if you, so many people would naturally if you put a rape exception in your bill find it abhorrent so the pro-lifers because we've been you know putting our finger on that mark so much as a result, they, they have to change what they're doing. Um, now I know Rachel's thinking like, but we call, we, we always say still ball, but what, what do we mean? Just, just so you understand the idea is like, if you had a sheet and you stretched it out across, like you had a street that was kind of taut and, uh, there are a bunch of little marbles all over the sheet representing different pro-life bills, pro-life organizations of where they were at. And they needed to be on the center of the sheet and the center of the sheet was abortion should be abolished as murder abolitionists basically say we take a big heavy steel ball agitation or whatever and drop it into the middle of the sheet and that'll 
as a result, make the other marbles move closer to the center because it just mm-hmm. sort of forced. So that's what, when abolitionists say steel ball. Um, now we go over that, and I, and I think this is an instance of steel balling in a certain sense, but it's also, it's strange. She's not basically saying, because abolitionists have been saying this and because so many people are thinking this, I've got to, I've got to start saying it or I'm going to become irrelevant or I've got to start saying this because it's the only game in town. The way she's framing it is more like, I've thought more about it and I've come to a different conclusion and seeing yeah. more instances of it. Yeah. Which she's about to talk more about. Yeah. yeah. It seems, it seems genuine. Like it seems like yeah. she's like, there's this idea that these people have been, I mean, it's an idea that we've been banging, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. um, but kind of like something has happened where, where, um, you know, she's thinking legitimately like, well, maybe this is the way to go. Yeah. And so she kind of goes into a little bit more of that, um, which maybe we can just let her go into. And I always thought like, I don't know, like what would the what would the consequences of that be, right? I mean, would they take away our federal money? Like what, I, I don't know, like what would that mean, right? Does that mean that they take away like Medicaid for, you know, medically fragile children? Like what, what does that mean, right? But then, you know, we saw states do it. We saw states do it with this, this COVID thing, you know, and we saw, big states like Texas and Florida and and many, many other states uh, go against COVID restrictions. And they, you know, didn't, they didn't close or, you know, they didn't do the mass mandates and they didn't close schools and they violated the, the federal government and their, you know, dictates. And yet there was no punishment, right? And nothing really happened. I mean, no money was taken away. Everything was fine. I know abortion's different because I know abortion is like the sacrament of the left. So I get it. But like everything went on, right? I mean, the administration was mad and they sort of like threw a temper tantrum and said like, no, they're not good governors. But everything went on and and so i'm thinking okay if there was ever a time okay actually stop here before before this okay so whenever james and i were whenever i was listening to this earlier and james is like setting up we're setting things up in here and she had made that comment about like well before when this was floated i always thought well well what when when we get our state be punished, we would get our money for Medicaid removed. Mm -hmm. She's not telling us about just something that she thought. That's like her stated position. Right. Yeah. She was having a conversation um, with Susan Burr, a Washington abolitionist on her Facebook page. And she actually says, no, you you don't understand. If you if a state defies Roe and abolishes abortion, they're going to lose their money for Medicaid and roads and schools and hospitals. How is that pro-life was what she was saying. And I have, Blasted that quote, like in, yeah. in every article. Anytime you've ever written about Abby Johnson, like look at this. Or about nullification. Like I hold yeah. that comment that she made up as like the example of the pro-life leaders. And here's like the biggest example of it. Mm-hmm. Don't actually act like abortion's murder. Because if abortion's murder and you're going to say, and we've said this on the podcast, if you're going to say that roads and hospitals and, you know, all these, these, these federal aid programs matter more than protecting babies from murder, do you even believe it's murder? And so I've, you know, that's that's been a very well circulated comment that she made. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that she's going back on that that one specifically, and she'll actually she'll actually say uh, she'll she'll do more explicit going back on that later mm-hmm. later in the video. But that's a very encouraging thing. And so there's a there's a page on our website. Um, I think it's the Ignoro. It's a it's a it's a it's in our drop down menu. If you go to the What We Believe section of freethestates.org, yep. and I use her example of that. And that's been up there for two years now. Um, but I'm going to take that down because it's very, like I said, it's very encouraging to see yeah. her yeah. go back on Or that. maybe amend it, do a note. I mean, because yeah. it's still an example. Basically, we've always said, well, you just need to defy the Supreme Court. Like I always say, like, you need to tell the Supreme Court to pound sand or tell them like, well, okay, Supreme Court, I guess, enforce your opinion. Like, because the Supreme Court doesn't have an army. They are not the executive branch. They can't 
really send troops into the state of Oklahoma. They can't even like change the defunding. So it's like, it's been this uh, change funding of a state because we've, we've defied them. Um, and abolitionists have always brought this up. And uh, the general, I think, representative view is like from whether we're talking to Greg Treat, Abby Johnson, anyone in between is there are consequences to defying the Supreme Court. Like your state could, you know, bear some some kind of punishment from the federal government. And and yeah. abolitionists, we've always been like, it's worth it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like stop all of our federal funding to protect preborn human beings from destruction. Let's just do it and then rely upon the blessings of God. We'll get on without federal funding for our roads yeah. and they're, stop murdering babies. They're currently being tyrannical saying you must allow child sacrifice in your land. And so like, let them, let them like yeah. put it back on them. Like let's defy them and then take the repercussions for it instead of just like so quickly bowing to that saying, oh, I guess I'll yeah. obey right. you. as Make yeah. them expose themselves as a tyrant. When, exactly. when we don't even push back, yeah. it, the tyranny isn't clear. Mm-hmm. But when you say, no, this is wrong, and then they, they're they going to, you know, if they were to enforce, you know, their opinion, try to do it financially, or if they were to try to send troops, they're showing how tyrannical they are. Yeah. And yeah. we're not even forcing them to expose themselves when we just bow down automatically. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah cuz cuz if you were to work it out like what it would look like, say Oklahoma passes an abolition bill or the governor just says, "Hey, we're shutting down these things on account of the 14th Amendment or the Oklahoma State Constitution. We're going to protect the right to life." Did it, and then the federal government said like, "If if you continue to uphold this, we're going to come in and unseat you." And abolitionists are like, "Well, then we're going to come to the aid of the governor." Like this sort of contest yeah. or conflict is a necessary thing to actually get this ball rolling. Like yeah. this is this is what was happening in Wisconsin whenever people were helping fugitive slaves yep. and the federal government and the Supreme Court are like, you're not allowed to help fugitive slaves. And the Wisconsin Supreme Court and the governing authorities there were kind of like, well, we're going to anyway. Yep. And that was a, a thing that sort of like led to eventually, you know, the 13th, 14th Amendment. But... Um, it's another one. It's a thing that makes me think that just to get back to Abby, that she's having a genuine thought here that the problem possibly would be that it seems to be based on a pragmatic, like she saw that Florida and Texas were able to like, you know, not obey federal mandates on masks or vaccines. Mm -hmm. And because that was successful, maybe this can be successful. It's not been sort of like a, well, the word of God says defy tyrants. Yeah, or, she's not coming to the conclusion for the same reasons that we do, which are, yeah. which yeah. maybe for a few of the same reasons, because there are pragmatic arguments, yeah. but there is a foundational theological abolitionism that it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't sound like she's quite embraced. Yeah. But even for the pragmatic reasons, she's still, yeah. she appears to be heading toward a right conclusion, which is yeah. let's, let's actually bow up and abolish abortion. Yeah. And, and cut the crap with his nonsense. The, so. bi- the yeah. biblical theological reason for why you should defy tyrants yeah. is valid, and that and it and it therefore works. She's yep. seeing it opposite. Hey, this works. Maybe that biblical thing that those abolitionists are saying is valid. Yeah. Um, so she's coming at it probably from a different angle or whatever. But it does it again. It seems like she's thinking about it, and she's thinking my previous opposition was p- false. Yep. And, and she goes on. Defy Roe. If there was ever a time to say, you know what, we're just, we're just not going to do it anymore. We're just going to make abortion illegal in our state. And we don't care what Roe v. Wade says. We don't care what the federal government says. And come what may, right? Like, you can take away our funding for Mm -hmm. whatever roads you can take away our funding for this or that like nothing is more important than saving the lives of children that are being butchered and killed and torn apart in the womb so do whatever you want we're not going to allow you to kill our children and okay outside of Dropping the A bomb, you know, yeah. she said, uh, "Make abortion illegal instead of abolish abortion." Mm-hmm. 
she basically just kind of said the free the states uh, sub motto or whatever thing like yeah. that states should abolish abortion within their borders. Like, she's yeah, basically trumpeting and, that. And there. what she's saying, I think what she, she was saying there in that last part was very similar to kind of the abolitionist refrain back to the days of slavery and one that we repeat today. Duty is ours. Results belong to God. She's yeah. like, mm-hmm. come what may, whatever the federal government wants may, to yeah. do, yeah. we're going to do what's just. Federal government, the ball's near court, but here's where we stand. Yeah. Like, that's that's really that's really yeah. good. The only <laughs> difference is, is that she's like, well, I mean, if there ever was a time, I mean, it's like, we're always like, it's always been the, the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, I mean, but ha- you know, welcome to the party whenever you get yeah. here. It's, you know, <laughs> fine. But that she seems to be... What's, it's kind of weird because this, this is Abby Johnson, unplanned, mega superstar of the pro-life movement, yep. basically saying as though it's like a new thought, maybe seeking to establish justice for babies is more important than having Medicaid and like sort of this sort of come what may thing. Like I'm going to do the right thing. Yep. Like this, I would say like there may be consequences to abolition. Like the reason that governors and there's no governor in the United States of America who demands an abolition bill and enforces it because of the consequences. You mm-hmm. could have multiple governors out there who think abortion is murder, wish that it could be abolished, but they don't because they are afraid of the consequences. Yeah. And we would always say, well, forget the consequences, like whatever kind of consequence we have to suffer for these preborn children, that is interposition. Like I'm going to lay down my life, my job, my career, my my plans to be president or move up the political ladder. I'm laying that all down because this is actually that important. Yeah. Saving mm-hmm. babies. And anyone who thinks that abortion can be abolished without that sort of uh, self-sacrificial action uh, just is not does not have their eyes open or does yeah. not understand yeah. how change happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our culture loves child sacrifice and our Supreme court has enshrined child sacrifice, uh, yeah. you know, from nothing as a constitutional right. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to take us bowing up. And if you think we're going to abolish abortion without bowing up and being willing to, to, to risk federal funding or risk whatever else, yeah. you just don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And, and she's implicitly admitting that the pro-life position that she's held and she is like, I would say, the top, or she's at least in the top tier, pro-life leaders. I would say she's, she's the most prominent, probably most name recognition of any of them, I think. Yeah. yeah. Now, that doesn't mean she's sort of like the pro-life ideologist or apologist or something like that, but this is probably a video, like, I mean, she's just filming it like in her house or something or in a hotel mm-hmm. room or something, whatever that is. Um, I don't think she's like sort of run this by a whole team of people. <laughs> it doesn't seem like, I mean, like you can't run this by like Clark Forsyth or Scott Klusendorf or anyone like that. They'd be like, no, don't say these things. Do you realize you're basically just saying, Hey, that thing that the abolitionists always say might be right because maybe saving babies is more important than pretty much everything. Yeah. Like, like, and, and that pushback might be hitting her right now. Um, because like you said, I, I, I doubt she did run this video by other people in the movement. And so I, I know I worked for, you know, in the pro-life movement. And so I know there are, there's kind of a big group chat of the pro-life leaders. Mm-hmm. And I know that this is, I guess I don't know, but I'm very confident that this video, uh, has made some waves in those kind of pro-life leader group chats. And I'm, yeah, I am curious to know yeah. how, the, how they're responding to it and whether or not she's in trouble with them or yeah. that, well, because it'd be, yeah, it'd be interesting to know. To kind of go, um, put on a little tinfoil hat for a second, just to entertain some (laughs) ideas. It could be that in those chats of pro-life leaders, there is sort of a, Hey guys, um, you know, that stuff we've been opposing that the abolition has been saying, we're going to have, that is the only game in town that that is where people are going. We're seeing the Southern Baptist conventions going for this. More and more people are becoming abolitionists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've opposed them. We've opposed our ideas. Everything's going to shift and we are going to become irrelevant. Maybe we should start saying, hey, this is, I, I think this is a good idea and try to make sure that we are on that train. It doesn't look like that's the way that it's going, but it could very well be that um, she's just kind of signaling a shift that is occurring. Yeah. Um, and and it, that would be still ball. Like, right. As the abolition movement grows, as our 
arguments or ideas or strategies or bills get more and more heard and more and more people go, well, yeah, wait, isn't that what the pro-life movement's always been doing? We are going to see pro-life leader after pro-life leader. And we've seen some of these already, like on Facebook, where all of a sudden they're like, acting like they've always been for abolition. Right. And, and that is a pretty common thing in politics. So like here in Oklahoma, there was a, a, a state senator um, who had put forward constitutional carry a few years in a row. And because he was kind of a kind of kind of an uber conservative dude, the establishment and the committee chairman didn't allow that bill to, 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 to be passed. But then eventually they realized this is Oklahoma. And if we keep stalling this bill, we're going to get voted out. We have no choice. Let's introduce this bill ourselves. Let's take it from Dom, pretend it was our idea the whole time, and we can celebrate ourselves as the heroes of constitutional yeah. carry and not invite Dom to be part of any of this. Yeah. And that's that's how this goes. Yeah. In a lot of cases. The game all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. how moderates react to people kind of forcing them to deal with an issue. Yep. They'll eventually just kind of pretend it was their idea the whole time. Now yeah. I don't think that's exactly what she's doing here, but I think there are many others who will do that exact thing. And we've got to be prepared oh, yeah. for that to be what happens. I'm going to butcher the quote, but Schopenhauer has it. Uh, Thomas Kuhn has it. Lots of intellectual historians have mm -hmm. like made this comment. Like, you know, the first they say you're crazy. Yeah. Then they say like you're, you're evil. And then, and then they say they've always been with you. Yeah. And it, it was their idea. So it's yeah. kind of like, and then, and then people who are truly sort of pushing for a paradigm shift or whatever, generally are okay. Yeah. Whenever all of a sudden the people who've been opposing all of a sudden are taking credit for the idea. And they're yeah. like, mm -hmm. well, I don't care. I wasn't doing this for credit. Yeah. Uh, I don't care if Greg Treat wants to run the abolition of abortion in Oklahoma Act. And take credit for it. Yeah. I just <laughs> want them to abolish abortion in Oklahoma. Yeah. But like that is like you're yeah. saying, it's like they Abby Johnson has said that we are crazy or wrong, that abolition is unconstitutional, that it's evil, that it's too costly. And now she's like saying, well, maybe this is the thing that we should do. Yeah. Um, and it's not, I think for her own soul, it would be better for her to be like, listen, you know, to publicly, I used to oppose this. I was wrong. I repent. I'm going to go this direction. And I, it would be, you know, and I embrace the gospel and people are saved by faith alone and grace alone. Yeah, it would be great <laughs> if she did all that. Um, but uh, in the event that she isn't going to admit it or pro-life leaders aren't going to admit that, hey, the abolitionists have always been right. And they just want to sort of like wake up and be like, oh, we. Oh, this is the thing now. Yeah, yeah. that'll be fine with us, you know, Yeah. Uh, as long as they don't bring in with it compromise, because th that is something mm -hmm. to be concerned with. Right. Um, because uh, just to say one last thing on that, um, I think as the abolition movement grows, there will be pro-life leaders sort of, you know, testing the, the waters or the winds or whatever and saying, can I, can I fundraise off of abolitionism the way I've fundraised off of pro-life and, and kind of jump ship because they have to. And I don't think that's necessarily going to be good. Um, but I think it's something that we can predict. All that being said, this video just, I think Callie posted this and was like, hey, what do y'all think of this? Yeah. Blindsided me. Like, it's, yeah. I don't think that I'm going to wake up and on a Tuesday or a Monday or whatever, see Abby Johnson doing this without some kind of um, conversation or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should let her just finish her, yep. finish her video. Got a minute left. Abortion's going to be punishable in our state. Oh, wait, hold on, stop it. That's the other thing. Abby Johnson has opposed the idea of punishing people. I don't know what she means by that. Yeah, probably need some further clarification to know what she's exactly what she's saying. She's but. been really strongly against equal protection. Yeah. yeah. But punishing of, abortion. The reason that pro-lifers don't support abolition bills isn't just because they're scared of the Supreme Court and federal consequences. Also, they have historically opposed the idea of there being any kind of punishment for the mother as a principle in the killing of the mm -hmm. child. And the fact that she's using the P word there, punish, is like, mm -hmm. is, is there going to be a subsequent video where she's like, you know, I've really been thinking about this. Abortionists don't go out into the culture looking for babies to kill. The parents bring the babies to them. So really there should be punishment for asking someone to kill your baby. Yeah. 
and that I could I could actually see that a little bit because I remember seeing back in like 2014 and 15, Abby Johnson did not always kind of hold the like I, I was the because Abby Johnson, you know, she she had a couple yeah. of abortions um, while she was working for Planned Parenthood or uh, maybe even yeah. before that. Yeah, and she when she first became a pro life kind of celebrity, she was saying things like, I was not a victim. Like my children were the victim. And I, I've seen those quotes from yeah. her. Now that changed because the pro-life movement is not going to be okay with that. Yeah. And so her tune kind of changed on that over time, but that was her original position. I was not a victim. My children who I killed were, were, were the victims. Mm -hmm. And so that was her tune originally. And so to see her go, you know, shift back to that would be, would be very promising or and very encouraging as well. Yeah, she's been, this whole video, she's been talking about abortion being murder and the importance of, she's been talking about it like it's murder and yep. saying mm -hmm. how we should be treating it as murder, which is super refreshing. Mm -hmm. And this is consistent with that. If she is if she's considering or entertaining the thought of equal protection, criminalization, like treating, actually murdering your preborn child, like treating your born child, like that would be incredibly, incredibly yeah. encouraging. And I, she, hope, I hope that. Yeah, because it, I mean, it, it could mean even greater things going on in her heart. But but really, and just, just to make it clear, everything she's saying in this video, she is acknowledging is not the pro-life view. Like, she, she began it, if you'll recall, by saying, I'm about to say some stuff, and some of my viewers are going to be like, are you going crazy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're just there's nothing crazy about you treating abortion as murder. But she seems to know that a lot of her pro-life followers are going to find the mere idea of abolishing abortion in a state in defiance to the Supreme Court and making it punishable is not something that she normally says. So, I mean, like we, I always think that there's going to be pro-life leaders who are like, I've always been saying this, you know, because yeah. they just have pride issues or whatever. But, um, and she may turn around and say that she's always been saying it, like, you know, that she wrote your pamphlet. And <laughs> she, I don't know. But here in this video, it, it, the point I want to make is that she is saying, what I'm saying here is not normally what I say. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. um, think about it. Like, I just feel like if there was ever a time to do it, and if there was ever a state to do it, it should be Texas or Florida. Oklahoma. I just she didn't really say Oklahoma either. <laughs> feel like that's sort of now is the time. Like now is a good time to do it. I don't know. Like, what do you think? Am I crazy? Like, is this a crazy idea or do you think we could do it? I, I think we could do it. I think babies are worth it. If we're willing to defy the federal government because of a mask, I feel like we should be willing to defy the federal government to save the life of an innocent unborn child. Don't you? A man, yes. fellow human being. Who's a female? I would normally say a man, <laughs> sister, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> there's one thing to argue with there. Um, it's always been time. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's talking about like, like maybe now's the time. Like because of what we've seen in Florida and Texas, maybe now is the time to do it. The time for justice has always been now. Yeah, this should have happened in 1973. It should have been immediate response to the Roe v. Wade. Yeah, the Roe v. Wade yeah. decision. Yeah, so. asserting state sovereignty. We are yeah. not going to abide by that here. We're going to protect preborn human beings, equal justice, equal protection. Yeah, and all pro-life leaders should have been basically saying babies are worth it. I mean, it's yeah. so weird. Like, she's basically saying, am I crazy for thinking that babies are worth it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's there's a yeah. lot here that's being admitted. Yeah. It says something about where the pro-life movement is to where you say something as common sense as that, but you kind of have to preface it with, is this is this crazy? Is this insane? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the most common sense thing in the world. Like, yeah, child sacrifice is the biggest issue and is worth paying whatever cost the federal government wants to make us pay. Yeah. So she ends her video by saying, I think we should defy the federal government, be willing to defy the federal government in order to save unborn babies. Do you? Like, she's testing the waters. She's floating these ideas to yeah. her pro-life followers, her fan base, really, to see whether they will go with her on that. Right. And uh, do you have any predictions? 
Well, it will be interesting to see what happens. Like I said, I mentioned the fact that this is probably making waves among the pro-life leaders, but even among just like Abby Johnson, people who really like her and, and, and follow her work and organizations and stuff. I remember I was part of a, um, back from my days when I was a pro-life activist, I was part of a, a major pro-life uh, Facebook page. I think it ha- I think it's up to like 380,000 likes on Facebook. And eventually they, they kicked me out as an admin. And that happened when Laura Klassen kind of had a, had a bit of a, of, mm-hmm. a, of a spat with Abby Johnson and all the other admins were like big Abby Johnson fans. And I was like saying, no, like Laura's right. And mm-hmm. that's what like got me kicked out of that group was yeah. the fact that Laura was kind of going abolitionist and I was supporting her. Mm-hmm. And so even her followers are very strongly kind of of the viewpoint that Abby used to hold at least before this video. And so I'll be interested to know how the pro-life leaders react to this and how her, you know, as you mentioned, her own followers react to this. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. There so. may be followers who haven't heard the idea of nullification before, and yeah. the idea is very yeah. powerful yeah. Um, and effective, and uh, obviously it's a it's a righteous thing in, yeah. in this instance. Um, and I think there will be some, a good many. Now, now her Facebook or her her YouTube channel doesn't have tons of. We're hoping a lot of people watch this. It's yeah. not like a lot of people have seen it yet, but you know, they're going to see it through our program, but that's, right. that's our audience. But it'd be great if a lot of pro-lifers see this. Cause yeah, it's going to seed that culture with the ideas of nullification for the sake of preborn children. But there's going to be people that are watching it going, Whoa, huh. I never thought about this. Mm-hmm. There's also going to be a lot of people because she's so marketed as like, I mean, she's marketed in Southern Baptist churches. Like she's yep. invited to speak at Rose day at the Oklahoma Capitol and yep. stuff. Uh, the pro-life, event that's anti-abolitionist here in Oklahoma. Um, but there's a lot of just people who just would assume that what she's saying is what she's always believed. And they're going to be watching it going like, wait a second, if you're saying, if you're asking me, is this crazy? Well, I always thought this is what we were doing, which is what we, you know, whenever I give a talk on here's a pro-life bill, here's an abolition bill, there's always people who come up and say, man, I always thought those pro-life bills that I, my pastor was asking me to support, I mm-hmm. just always assumed it was calling for the establishment of justice without exception and compromise. Thank you. Yeah, so I think there are going to be a lot of people who do that. Um, the, the one thing, though, that we should um, caution y'all about, um, caution ourselves about, we, we shouldn't just get real giddy about this. Um, right. because this could be an instance of her just testing the waters. Like, can I go down this direction? Um, and that isn't the way we should decide. Like it should be like, yeah. she makes this video, say 85% of her fan base says, no, you are crazy. You're sounding like, um, T Russell. Hunter. You sound like <laughs> T Russell Hunter. Don't you know he eats babies or whatever? Um, and then she should, in the face of that 85%, say, well, you know what? I'm going to hold this line because it's the right line. Yeah. It may be that she's like, oh, whoops, my bad. I mean, there was a pro-life leader. I'm going to say his name. His name is Troy Newman. Troy Newman, we met like back in like 2013. Um, some abolitionists met with him. Big old long thing. He cried. He was like, oh, my gosh, I think you guys are right. I think this is what I need to do. I think this is the best position. But I still am going to go off to this pro-life conference and present this strategy thing. That he was already scheduled to speak at. He was already scheduled to speak at. He went to that thing. Everyone praised him and loved him for his incrementalism. And and he came back and he was like, you, you jerks almost deceived me. And like, like I was wrong to like go like, and you know, and he's been a very strong, like mean opponent of abolitionism ever since. And it was based on like a, he thought what you guys are saying is biblical and I, it's almost like he was saying the Holy spirit has led you to me today and I need to go with you. And then all of his fans and coworkers said no. And he said, Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. What was I thinking? Yeah. That could happen. So we're not saying, and that, and that's wrong. Um, and we're not, so we're not saying, Hey, we're all good. Like Abby Johnson's yeah. part of the abolitionist <laughs> movement. The exclamation question mark at the title, Abby Johnson abolitionist, is we don't think Abby Johnson is an abolitionist, but she's floating the ideas, considering them. Yeah, this is very encouraging to see her moving in the right direction. Um, That's not to say that we would necessarily, you know, 
like speak at the same rally, like invite her to speak at Abolition Day or something, anything like that, right? There's, yeah. She's got a, a long way to go in terms of um, just rejecting incrementalism altogether in yeah. terms of theologically, as you made, made reference to, you know, yeah. um, she is a staunch Roman Catholic. And so there are there are still some issues there. So we're not yeah. saying Abby Johnson, abolitionists, go follow her, go donate. We're not saying that. Yeah. But we are saying it is encouraging to see people with platforms like she has seeding these ideas to her followers. Yeah. That is a very, very encouraging thing. To and see. it tells us that we are having a greater effect, like that we are being heard. Sometimes you're like, I'm putting this idea out and I swear the straw man are just unbearable. Like, are they purposely straw manning us or do they literally not understand what we're saying? Yeah. Well, this video makes me think, Oh, she understands what we've been saying. She just yeah. like didn't agree with it or thought it was crazy. And now yeah. she's thinking maybe it's not so crazy. So, you know, that we're getting to her, getting to other people that like basically in a, to speak pragmatically, all the pro-life stuff after 49 years has like failed. And they're all basically like, well, dang, nothing that we do works because we need to nullify. And it's like yeah. they have this <laughs> moment where we're like, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and what we've been doing has been something we're going to have to work against. Like James writes about in the pamphlet, like yeah. the pro-life laws we've been putting forward are entrench entrenching judicial supremacy. Yeah. And now she's going to have to turn around and if she's, if she's accepting nullification, if this is something that she's going to continue to promote, um, she's actually going to have to work against the effects of what yeah. she has done. Yeah. Now that is the next step if she is to keep progressing. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see if that yeah. happens. And, and there is more to abolitionism than just, this. Row, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. there, there, there is sort of the full on gospel of the kingdom stuff that right. is she, she's not even really addressing. Um, but, uh, yeah, on the whole, an encouraging thing for the abolitionist movement. Um, yep. and, uh, now you, you mentioned we wouldn't yeah. speak at a rally, uh, with Abby Johnson. <laughs> Um, but she had to speak for us at a rally yeah. by no real choice of her own. Yeah. yeah. So, so the abolitionists, uh, you know, we've got a real strong contingent of abolitionists here in Oklahoma and another place where there is a very strong abolitionist movement is in Texas. And so in Texas, they went to the Republican party of Texas to try to change the platform. And what the Republican party of Texas does is each before each legislative session, they pick eight things that are the priorities of the Republican party of Texas. Yep. And so abolitionists fought hard to make abolition of abortion one of those eight priorities, and they got it. So, yeah. so the Republican Party is having a, a, a big promotional event to promote their legislative priorities that were voted on by the delegates to the state convention. Yeah. And they have this thing, you know, abolition of abortion. And so they think, huh, who should we get to come speak on behalf of the abolition of abortion? They probably just thought the most priority. famous anti-abortion Texan. Let's get Abby Johnson to come speak for the abolition of abortion yeah. tenant. And so there's this Republican Party of Texas event, and Abby Johnson is speaking on behalf of the immediate abolition of abortion, on behalf of equal protection. Yeah. Now, when we saw that, we were kind of like, well, maybe she's like reinterpreting those words to mean something else that fits within her own strategy or yeah. whatever. But maybe not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it, it was one of the most awkward, cringy videos that I've ever seen where yeah. it's like, you know, that Abby Johnson doesn't support abolition. Yeah. She's being asked. She can't expose herself as someone who doesn't support abolition. She can't get up there and be like, well, actually, abolitionism is unconstitutional because yeah. of the Supreme Court, which she has said on Facebook. Yeah. But after the Republican Party passes it as a platform and says, hey, will you speak on behalf of this? It reminds me of another instance where um, Tony Lowinger, they're, they're having an Oklahoma oh, Republican yeah. Party thing and trying to get abolition as the position of the Oklahoma Republican Party, which they did. Yep. And, uh, and after they had put <laughs> abolition as the platform, uh, an older gentleman in the room basically stood up and said, I'd like to take this time to thank Tony Lowinger for all his tireless work over you know, 40 years because without him, we never would have got to the position where we're as a party committed to abolishing abortion as murder. <laughs> and, and Tony, and everyone claps, everyone's clap. And Tony's just sort of like a, <laughs> thank you. When Tony is actually dead set against it yeah. and has been doing, it was actually at that time working behind the scenes to keep that from becoming the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It becomes a platform and because pro-lifers have so deceived people and people don't know that they're opposed to abolition yeah. um, ideologically and strategically, he's got to like stand up 
Thank you. And accept the praise for the abolition plank. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I think afterwards, like, walk over to, like, Joseph Silk or Joseph Silk's parents or someone like that and be like, we need, we need to talk. Yeah. Like, and I actually, that, I haven't seen or heard much from Tony since then. But, um, yeah. so, yeah, there's a lot of steel ball going. There's a lot of pro-lifers are having to adjust and adapt to yeah. the reality that the abolitionist um, cat is out of the bag. The abolitionist lion is out of the cage. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all we'll say about Abby Johnson for now. But we will. Um, I'm not going to click follow <laughs> on her videos, but but I'll stay tuned and see what else happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and we will. I'm sure if she continues to go down this, like listen, we we believe the gospel. We believe the Holy Spirit is working to change hearts and minds, and we would love for Abby Johnson to become our sister and coworker in the cause. So um, we certainly are not opposed to that. And we believe, and, and really that's been the history. There's lots of people who have formerly been opponents of abolitionism who, you know, within a year, even like within time have, mm-hmm. have become abolitionists. So it, it, you know, if, if, if the Lord can convert me a sinner just to, to following him, he can do that for Abby Johnson and and have her join us in the abolitionist cause. So we're just watching. We're praying. Maybe, we, you know, we always ask, you know, there's some point of application, be praying for Abby, uh, Abby Abby's followers and the pro-life movements, that this video and our discussion of it would cause many people to, um, yeah, consider the things that Abby Johnson is saying, agree with them, and uh, join us in the cause. So that's yep. all we're going to say about that, I guess. Yep. For the moment. Anything to add about Abby? I think it just about covers it. So, All right. So yeah. we can we can move on to the the final things for the Liberator podcast. We've got some big uh, projects coming up that we want to talk about. We're going to be talking about every episode. Um, and we also have uh, some art to debut. Um, let me go ahead and grab that. We'll do that first. All right. So um, one of the things we do here at Free the States and the Liberator podcast um, just to give back to our supporters is, um, you know, we do a, a monthly drawing for a drawing. I don't know how this is looks on the, um, the video here. Which do I hold it to this or do I hold it to that? I don't know what it looks like on that one. So I don't know. Hopefully, th- there's a lot of detail in this one, but it goes along with something we were saying in this program. It says yep. duty is ours, results belong to God. It's got the guy chopping down the abortion tree. Providence, not pragmatism. One of the tenets of abolitionism. Abolitionist symbol there at the bottom. Black and white drawing. This is heading towards a t-shirt near you. Um, And now that we've got it scanned and I'm able to work with it on the computer, we can give away the original. So we uh, take all of our monthly supporters and big donors, people who are really keeping our lights on, keeping our bellies fed, all that kind of stuff. We put their name in a, in a, a bucket. Yep. We, need to, we need to get a bigger bucket. Yep. Um, help us get a bigger bucket. Um, we, and we draw um, one person each month and give, give them a piece of art. So I think this yep. is, we'll be showing it this week. So you can win this original piece of art. You can frame it and you can hang it in your office or you can um, let your kids color it. It's a great coloring sheet. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, photocopy it, color it. Yeah. And we have an especially good reason right now um, for you to become either a, a large one-time donor or a uh, yeah. monthly supporter. So we've got the Male Abolition Project, which if you were watching or listening last week, uh, we kind of debuted that on the podcast last week. Um, but basically what we want to do is we want to send 40,000 pieces of mail to uh, Republican voters in targeted districts where abolitionists are going to be running for office. Yep. Now, we want, to, we want to educate them, right? Uh, everything we do, we want to educate people. And so we're going to have one of these Are You an Abolitionist pamphlets in every single piece of mail. Um, we're going to invite people to Abolition Day in there, try to get lots of people coming out to that. Um, we're going to have a piece of fundraising material, try to get people plugged in with the work of Free the States. And we are going to have... Specifically catered material to the abolitionist candidates that are running right. in their districts. Right, a promotion of the candidate who's running in their area. Um, yeah. Because 
the reason we're saying it to targeted people is to help those candidates educate yeah. those specific voters. Yeah. Um, so promote the candidates, get people plugged in with the, with the work of free the states, convert people to consistent abolitionism. We want to accomplish all of that, and we need your help to do that. So yeah. especially now of all times, uh, please go to freethestates.org slash donate. Actually, it's, it's a different link. It's freethestates.org slash male hyphen abolition um, is, the, is the link to donate for yeah. this project. Um, so please go do that and yeah. get your name entered to win the sweet art. Yeah. And just know it costs an incredible amount of money to yeah. put all that stuff in an envelope and send it to 40,000 people. Yeah. It's, it's just, we wish there was a way to reach them all and they were all watching our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, but algorithms yeah. are, are against us. But if we put it in the mail and send it to their house, no algorithm is going to stop them <laughs> from getting it. Yeah. But th- it does cost us all that money, that data, that, you know, that mailing... Well, post, all that kind of stuff, cost money. So uh, we really want to do this. We really think that it's going to have a great effect on seeding the culture with abolitionism, promoting abolitionist candidates. Um, But we really can't do it unless we raise a good amount of money. So that's, that's me historically, someone who doesn't ask for money, asking you to help us do that. To get it, Um, to get this to one voter is going to cost $2 and 59 cents give or take a fraction of a cent. Yeah, $2.59 times 40000 We don't have that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we could never sell enough T-shirts and stickers uh, to get there. So we just do need some um, donations. So um, help us out in that. And I would love to, um, you know, you should give just because you care about the work that's being done and you want us to do it. But um, someone who gives is going to get this piece of art or some future piece of art. So we are happy and thrilled to do that. Yep. So go to freethatsace.org slash male abolition. Um, and unless there's anything else, that is all we have for episode 61 of the Liberator podcast, where we are committed to being as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. See you next week.